Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning into Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we are working on a 2009 Mercedes-Benz CLK350 and today's job is going to be a programming one. But first I'd like to thank our first ever official Super Mario Diagnostics channel sponsor, Top Don. Top Don is making a great name for themselves by not only providing our industry with innovative tooling, but also showing their general support for technical training both at a local level as well as a national level. In my experience, their customer service is second to none. They are the tools I pick up when working on complex diags and programming, and I recommend them highly. Uh, we are going to program a brand new ME module, which is the ECM in other words, and uh, we're going to use the Top Don Phoenix Max for the job. And I went ahead and did a pre-scan so you guys could see this. And uh, this is what the, the, the kind of codes that you'll get once you have like a new module installed. You'll see, or if you have issues with the pre-existing module, uh, you will see uh, CAN messages all over the place between different modules. So it may alarm you uh, at first and whatnot, but it's, you know, even between different modules, you might think that you have separate issues but it's in reality, it's just because of one module. So to get started, we're going to go to control module programming. We are a 2009, so we're going to go to as of 2004. And we are going to go to the ECM. In other words, the ME, the ignition switch is on. Of course, before doing anything, you're going to want to make sure that you have your maintainer on. We're using the Top Don Tornado. 90,000 for the job uh, since it puts out 90 amps uh, you want to play it safe you don't want to go with like anything less than 50 that's for sure and don't forget also to disconnect the fan uh, the fan is pretty uh, hungry you know it, it wants current and during programming you don't want any risk of voltage coming down below a certain amount right now we're at 13.5 volts so we're good to go so we're going to go to control unit programming and we are using a new module in some cases you may have a communication with the old module and, and that you know that's pretty convenient because you can uh, clone it or you can pull the information out of the old one like the coding and stuff and put it into the new one but the top down phoenix max actually takes care of the coding as well so we're going to go to control unit programming and i go to automatic and when it's it, it asks us if we have a pre-existing uh, or a new ECU or a used one so it says to program a new one hit no <laughs> and yes you're gonna want to read this whole thing or you can just pause the video but we're gonna hit okay for now there is a couple of things that you're gonna want to do after programming so um, be sure to stick around to see that we're gonna download the files required if you ever have any issues downloading the files while using a Top Don, uh, be sure to reach out to them. They will get you on track. Uh, in my case, needed to set up a VPN network, but nothing uh, out of the ordinary. We're going to download some more files. <laughs> All right, so we're back and we're almost done with this download. It took a little while, but uh, not too crazy. Um, after this, we are going to have to do the drive authorization, relearn, SC encoding, and um, a couple of relearns for the um, uh, cam timing and whatnot. So, downloaded successfully. Let's go ahead and finish this off. Uh, it's going to give us, since it's automatic, it gives us the object numbers. So, it pulls up the programming numbers based on its own database. Of course, there's risk involved in any programming event. It doesn't matter what you're working on. There's always going to be some kind of a risk. Uh, more so when you're using aftermarket tools, but um, we have ways to recover uh, the ME module if it comes to that. If you are not... At, I, know, I know that this is a programming video, and this, you know, when I first got into programming, it was like a giant veil. I didn't know what I was... Uh, you know what was waiting for me when when I was learning this stuff so it, it's kind of like you don't know what you don't know right so back when I first started when you start programming things um, everything went well the first and only time I ever break something was with a BMW I break the module and, and I did everything to the T with the factory tools and everything and it was recoverable there's times where it's not gonna be recoverable in this case, I'm willing to take this risk because I'm, we're able to recover this thing. So 
just to put that out there, you're programming at your own risk. Yes, this is te this is teaching you what's involved in programming, and uh, it, it maybe it goes to show like the upsides of programming over like swinging engines. If you want to swing engines, that's great, but you know <laughs> you can do some programming and it's a lot cleaner. It's a lot you know easier. But as the saying goes, it's easy until it's not. If something was to happen, if this thing was to break or start not communicating, that you would have, you would need ways to recover that. So that's something you may want to look into. Uh, we will not be addressing how to recover uh, DMEs or e MEs once they're bricked in this uh, in this video, and probably not in this channel. Um, but we're gonna continue on. And yes, we're going to continue. Switch on ignition. Just double checking it's on. Remember, the fan is disconnected and you have a maintainer on. If, you, if you're programming out there without these basic requirements, uh, you're, you're in for a world of hurt. Because voltage, you can recover software issues. You can recover firmware issues, things like that. What you can't recover, or what you may need to open up and repair a module for, are voltage-related things where uh, it cooked it. <laughs> so you do not want that to happen. So it says 12 minutes. I'm going to step away, and we're going to come back once it's done. Really, you're not missing anything. All you're seeing is this progress bar go up. So uh, we'll be back soon. All right, perfect timing. Uh, let's go ahead and switch off the ignition. Do everything it tells you to do. Probably gonna wait for ten seconds, and uh, then we're gonna carry on, uh, carry out all of the uh, post-programming procedures that we need to do in order to get this thing on the road again. Let's go ahead and switch the ignition on. It won't even crank right now because we still have other things we got to do. Uh, the programming is done, but that's pretty much kind of the least of it. So SCN coding must be performed. Let's go ahead and tell it to do the SCN coding and that will uh, code this computer to this car. So, you know, they're, they use this computer for a lot of different uh, types of vehicles. Um, so it has to be coded. I'm just gonna go with history, see what it does. Uh, usually if it leaves codes and whatnot, I'm, I'll look into it later. Coding may, be, have, may have to be rectified and whatnot. So coding has been successfully completed uh, we're going to check that later on um, off camera to make sure that all the coding is correct uh, let's go ahead and switch off the ignition wait another 10 seconds let the EEPROM write <laughs> and then uh, continue on switch ignition on When you don't know anything about programming, that's it's like the biggest veil. Um, I'm not planning on putting like a ton of programming videos in my channel, but at least this one. Uh, let's go ahead and do the where is it? Special functions, uh, learning processes, and before we do the drive authorization system. Um, because at the end of that, they're going to want you to activate it. And you do that by starting the engine. But you can't start the engine if the fuel pump is not activated. So right now, the fuel pump is off. It's not even activated yet. So we're going to hit F3 in order to activate it. And I'm going to switch off the ignition. And it's not counting down, but let's see. <laughs> Switch ignition on. It didn't change from off to on, so let's go back and see if it did it. It says fuel pump off. That's weird. I'm going to do it one more time just in case. Oh, okay. So it didn't tell me to do the countdown. Oh, there it is. That's a little funky. And sometimes that happens, like when I'm programming keys, it'll say failed and it actually works. So sometimes these tools have a little bit, they're a little buggy. They're, they have some things that they have to fix, but I'm not too worried about it. We're going to go to drive authorization. 
if this if you're using a used ECM, you're not going to be doing the same process. That's for sure. This is not the same process. It's only going to work with a brand new uh, co uh, control module. So we have to put all of these yes in order for this thing to start. So let's go ahead and uh, do so. And let me just make sure that the VIN number is correct, and it is. Yes, we do want to detach transport protection and personalize the control module. Once the control module is personalized, it is married to the vehicle, and you are pretty much committed. <laughs> um, let's go ahead and start the engine. Let's see if the fuel pump thing activated, and it's just saying that it didn't. Fuel pump is activated. It would have stalled by now. We'll let it do its 10 second thing and confirm that it's been activated. But we're not done yet. We still got some more things to do. Do I wish to activate? Yes. Let it stall. That's fine with me. I don't care. It's not going to do anything. It is activated and you can no longer personalize it to another vehicle. Let's turn off the ignition switch. Let it do its uh, reset. And we're almost there. We're almost home. Switch ignition on, on, and I personally do both the throttle valve stop and the engine after replacement. Yes. Okay, switch ignition off. This is like... We're spending more time switching the ignition off than anything else. <laughs> but it's not too bad, right? Programming is not too bad. That's why I like it. I got into it. I saw a mobile guy coming one time doing the programming, and I'm like, man, what is he doing? What is that? <laughs> I wanted to know, and now we're here. Teach-in process after engine replacement is the final thing. Um, it tells you what you have to do, um, which is key on engine off pretty much and we're not done it says completed but we're not done we're gonna hit start process it does take a little while so if it's if it's something that you did really fast you didn't complete it the right way you just like you know button smashed it <laughs> that's what we like to call it when you butt, button smash and then you're passing through all these things and then you don't read it because you've done it so many times. We're going to start the engine and let it idle. And then, you know, something happens and you're like, uh-oh. Because <laughs> you just went through the whole thing. But we are pretty much done. Adaptation of camshaft position performed. Um, we're going to go and do a complete scan you do not want to oh yeah we're gonna go connect the uh, fan let me go connect it right now clear all the codes and then scan it all right so the fan is connected let's go back to our pre-scan and clear all the codes Of course, you don't want to clear all the codes unless you documented everything. Switch off ignition. Okay, do the 10 second thing. Switch ignition on. Of course, anything that was already there beforehand that has nothing to do with the programming will be there. And if there was anything wrong with the programming itself, we're also going to see that as well. So the SRS has a couple things in there that we are not addressing in this visit and has some stored codes on the ESP for some reason it didn't um, clear them sometimes you have to do a double clear like it, it requires you to clear the codes in one module before you can clear them in another and that's what's happening here that's weird makes you read it first that's fine let's read it that's that's good I like that they tell you to read it first before you can clear it Hmm, interesting. 
Let's do a key off and read again. Some of them you have to put the vehicle completely to sleep. Whoops, kind of did that too fast. All right, so I'm gonna put this vehicle completely to sleep in order for it to clear that. Um, I'm gonna try one more time to clear it, but. I have seen that before. Oh, this time it did clear, so let's go to read. No more DTCs. And uh, finally, I do one final scan, and then that will be my post scan. Actually, I should be turning on the engine. Let me start it over. I wanted to see everything, um, even after the engine is running. Let's do one last scan, and then this will be a completed programming event for your viewing pleasure and uh, hopefully to gear you up towards programming. This is uh, something that the industry has to move into as a whole because we cannot stay just doing nuts and bolts forever. Uh, with the way things are going, we need more people getting into programming and whatnot and all things related to that. Uh, so I hope that helps towards towards that goal. Oh yeah, this one doesn't let you see as it's scanning, but you could go to system list and pull it down there. <laughs> I am confident that this is good to go. The, all the powertrain stuff is good to go. Um, thank you all for tuning in. If you like what you see, hit like, leave a comment. What did I miss? I know I missed something, right? Be sure to tell me in the comment section and uh, be sure to hit subscribe if you want to see more stuff like this. There will be a training event, a free training event. I can't mention it enough. Free training event at this shop where I work, Autobahn Performance. Um, on November 19th, reach out to me for more details. Leave a comment if you're interested or send me an email at supermariodiagnostics at yahoo.com. Uh, it's free training. It's going to be a hybrid class and possibly a scope class. It will be Richard Falco and Hack and Light. And uh, huge thanks to all of our sponsors. You know who you are. Top Don, CTI, Nana's Restaurant. And uh, uh, there is Mixig as well. So um, thank you all for tuning in. I appreciate you all for taking the time. I hope this was useful. And uh, be sure to let me know if you liked the video. And I'll catch you all next time. Take care.